Hey guys and welcome back to Cherry Hills. This is episode number 15 and uh, today we are going to be working down at field number one. Uh, we're going to start out by uh, cultivating up that field and uh, then we're going to um, we're going to put something in the ground. I'm really not quite sure yet uh, but we'll figure it out. But before we uh, before we do that we're going to uh, go ahead and take our harvesters down to our uh, soybean field that's ready to harvest. Uh, we'll get them uh, We'll get them staged and set up over there, and then uh, we've got our pickup truck. We've got one of our handy uh, farm hands there bringing the pickup behind us, and uh, we'll just uh, bring the pickup truck down to field one. So conveniently, our our soybean field is right here around the corner. So the entrance is coming up here. We've got our oat field coming in very nicely over there. And uh, just early, earlier this afternoon, we went ahead and took a took a quick look at our sorghum field, and that's coming in quite nice as well. Alright, so we'll leave these guys over here, and uh, I'm sure our crew will uh, we'll get to those momentarily. You can uh, take me down to field one, that'd be great. So it would be really cool if there was a way to, uh, if there was a way to have uh, a, let's say a course play driver drive you somewhere and you could get in the passenger side. Um, I don't think that works right now, but I thought that would be a pretty neat idea, I think, for a uh, for a mod to be uh, to be the passenger in a uh, AI-driven vehicle. So we've got our Case Steiger down here uh, hooked up to our cultivator, and uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, see how much of this field we can get cultivated today. And this cultivator is part of the big bud pack. I'm just going to park our pickup here under the tree. Let's uh, move on into the field here and we'll get out of our tree. fold out our cultivator. We're going to do the first little bit here by hand and then uh, we'll bring up our GPS and do the rest. Alright, let's get to town. So while we are, uh, while we're doing this, let's see if we can do some of this in cab maybe. Might be hard to do since this equipment is so wide. I was hoping that we could use this this uh, particular tractor because we've got two of them uh, for our large. Uh, seed hawk planters but the uh, tractor here just doesn't seem to have the horsepower to uh, to pull 
those two planters, but uh, it definitely has the horsepower to pull the corn row or the the row crop uh, seeders. So we will probably be putting something in here that will work with the row crop seeders, uh, since we haven't seen that uh, that particular aspect yet. Because we do, we do not need grass at this point uh, on this map. Uh, we have pretty much caught up with our grass needs and have plenty of grass to to hold us for the for the foreseeable future. Uh, since we have uh, 50 some bales of the big big bales, uh, they are 6,200 uh, liters each versus 4,000, and uh, we've got a fair amount of of grass stored in our silo. I think over 500,000 liters of grass, and our uh, silage um, fermentation silo has a fair bit of silage in it. I think it's uh, close to full at uh, 300,000 liters. So I do have um, the more realistic code added to this tractor. Uh, you can see that we were you can see that we were down to about six mile an hour uh, coming up what that what appears to be a slight slope and uh, we started picking up speed coming down here coming down the hill we've got to be uh, got to be careful that we don't uh, get going too quick and lose control of our cultivator What this also means is that we need to be cautious on our on our hillsides uh, because this tractor will uh, slip laterally a lot more with the more realistic uh, code in it than it would uh, without. So we're just going to speed up time here and see how much of this field we can hammer out. see if we can't maybe get one of our hired farm hands to uh, finish this field off for us. Uh, we're going to jump in our pickup truck and head on back to the farm. We've got some fertilized sprayers and spreaders to uh, to get ready because uh, we want to uh, fertilize this field uh, once we're done cultivating it. And uh, we also need to go ahead and uh, fertilize our cornfield that we just harvested uh, and get that ready to turn around and uh, Put another crop in there. 
So let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, hire up one of our hands here to uh, go ahead and get started on this. And uh, like I said, we're going to jump in our truck and go get some fertilized spreaders and sprayers uh, ready to work. Alright, we are going to um, we're going to get the solid fertilized sprayer or spreader and uh, we're going to pick up a uh, overload wagon and uh, get to uh, fertilize in this field. I've been thinking about what we might plant in there and um, <clears throat> I think we're going to put uh, sunflowers in field number one. But like I said, we need to uh, we need to get a, f a first layer of fertilizer down, uh, so that we can then sow that with our Great Plains seeder, and then put another layer of fertilizer down. And then we'll just need to uh, spray it once it uh, once it comes up. Just gonna park our pickup truck here in the shade. See, we're gonna need to put some fertilizer in this one. thought we had fertilizer. Apparently we uh, apparently we're going to need to run up and get some fertilizer. Let's check and see what the level is in the other uh, sprayer or spreader. Well, that one's not doing much better either. So, uh, let's see if we've got some over here in our overload wagon. It would be the white wagon is where we're going to put our fertilizer. Let's see the mirrors. There we go. Well, we don't have too terrible much in that one either. So, uh, uh, what are we going to do here? Let's empty this. Move this out of the way. Then I guess we'll uh, maybe run up to the BGA and see if we've got some solid fertilizer. I didn't realize that we were this low on uh, fertilizer. But we are definitely going to need to uh, to get some of that. I wanted to go up to the BGA anyway and check on the levels of the diesel fuel. So this will just give us a good excuse to uh, take a little drive. So guys, cattle and crops is out. 
And I was thinking about this uh, earlier this week, uh, wondering if... Uh, so cattle and crops is... No, it's not really out. Um, a tech demo was released to us early access providers, uh, or early access uh, crowd funders, and um, it came out on Friday, uh, which is the same day that the mod contest mods were released. So I started thinking, was that a uh, was that a potential marketing blunder by Cattle and Crops, or could that have been a uh, a marketing genius uh, maneuver to uh, to release the um, tech preview on the same day as the mod contest uh, entries were released? Well, of course. Uh, of course, Cat on Crops did not know when the Mod Contest mods were going to come out. I uh, highly doubt that they realized that that was going to be Friday. But uh, I was starting to think and wonder, you know, did, uh, did, uh, did Cat on Crops do themselves a disfavor by releasing anything in the month of June? So we know that there's been a buzz for quite a while, but way back in March, is when Giants announced this uh, mod contest and uh, basically they said that uh, the deadline was June 4th way back then <clears throat> and they said when the uh, voting would be announced or as far as the uh, winners would be announced was going to be June 24th so did cattle and crops have a marketing blunder by going ahead and putting out their tech preview um, between June 4th and June 24th, knowing that their biggest competitor uh, would have major buzz on the internet uh, about their mod contest. So, you know, is that uh, is the buzz of Farming Simulator 17's mod contest uh, taking away from the potential buzz that the tech preview release uh, for cattle and crops could have generated? Uh, that is that is the question I'm posing to you all uh, to ponder and think about and comment on. Would it have been better for cattle and crops to wait until after June 24th to um, release anything uh, since they couldn't get anything out before June 24th? That's, uh, that's what I'm going to challenge you on. I'm thinking that maybe they should have waited. I know myself, uh, I downloaded both um, the mods for the mod contest and uh, the tech preview. I opened the tech preview just long enough to uh, basically look at it and uh, I booted it up just long enough to uh, to see that I had a problem with my graphics adapter and uh, bas basically I said well you know what I don't have time to mess with this right now I need to uh, I need to look at these uh, FS17 mods, so uh, so I went and off and did that, and it wasn't until today, uh, close to a week later, that I decided to uh, fire up Cat on Crops again and see if I could get that uh, graphics issue resolved. Uh, I was able to get the graphics issue resolved, but uh, still I, I didn't really mess with it that much. I didn't mess with Cat on Crops that much. I went back to Farm Sim 17 because there's just uh, there's just a lot of buzz about Farm Sim 17 at the moment, and uh, I'll probably I'll get back to cattle and crops. And they'll definitely get back to it. But uh, would I have had more interest in cattle and crops and spent more time with it to this point had the mod contest mods not been released? Well, most definitely. So for me. Um, it's it's a marketing miss because I'm not in cattle and crops. I'm in Farm Sim 17 because all the buzz is about Farm Sim 17 mod contest mods uh, and voting and who will win um, come June 24th. And once the buzz kind of dies down, then then I could see uh, you know spending spending a few hours uh, one night in cattle and crops and just exploring and trying things out. Now, you know, I also know from other people that have put videos up and have commented on the forums, on the various uh, farming sim forums, that uh, the tech preview is not all much. 
and uh, there's a lot of issues with with calibrating wheel controls and, and other things but uh, to some degree it's maybe sit around and wait and uh, see if some of these bugs don't uh, work their own way out or, uh, or basically what's going to go on so I, I challenge you all with the question did cattle and crops do a marketing blunder by releasing uh, their tech preview at the same time as Farm Sim 17's mod contest. So let me uh, get back here and shut off our truck. Make sure he's pulled up out of the road. We'll just uh, pull him down here in the shade. And uh, we will uh, roll down our windows. Let's check this. Let's switch back. All right, yep, let's roll down our windows. Uh, did we get that one? Yep. Okay. And let's uh, go ahead and extend our pipe out. And that way when we need to uh, refill, we'll be able to... Uh, to just pull up underneath. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, spray this by hand while our uh, cultivator is doing the field. We're going to zoom out because it's it's pretty difficult in cab to know how far your boom is uh, stretching. Looks like our hired help has uh, made very quick work of this field. Once uh, once they finish, we're going to send them actually over to over across the street to uh, field three to get to work. But it looks like there's some patches that we're going to need to get. They are not paying over mo that much attention to detail. They are missing some spots. So we are going to have to uh, correct that. Because our Great Plains cedar is not a uh, no-till cedar. It will require plowed or cultivated ground to, uh, to plant. So we will definitely need to uh, take care of these spots that our cedar has missed. So for those of you that have tried cattle on crops, what do you all think of it? Uh, what do you think of the tech preview? I've not played it. I've seen people playing it on YouTube and it seems okay. Uh, it seems like there is a lot to, uh, a lot still to go with that. Uh, there is plenty of room for advancement. Um, the only thing that's available to us appears to be a tutorial on cultivating a field. And what I had seen on the streams was that uh, there is no speed limitation on the uh, tractor or implement. So you're able to cultivate at pretty much full speed, which is of course not realistic because uh, no one is going to cultivate it uh, 20 some miles an hour or, or whatever that particular uh, tractor can go. The graphics look look pretty good. Um, you know, it's, it's going to take some refinement of my settings, I suspect, to, uh, to figure out what works best. So, he'll be done in, in just a few more minutes. So I also had just put up, um, just today, uh, put up my top five mod contest maps, and I'm, I'm kind of interested to know what you all think of that. Uh, wh what are your top five, maybe not just top five, which, what map do you think uh, should win best map category? Now I don't know if the, um, I suppose they're going to announce a, a different winner for each category. Uh, that's maybe why they would have different categories. 
So, you know, which map submitted under the best map category do you feel should uh, should win? Just let me know in the comments. So it looks like our helper here is done. We're going to uh, we're going to run over there and uh, we're going to jump in there and see if we can't. Uh, you're not done. We'll just uh, take care of some of this stuff for the for this guy. Yep, like here comes our train. The train really does liven up the map uh, when you're working down here on these fields where you have uh, have visibility of the train because uh, these particular roads do not have uh, AI traffic on them. these spots here and then uh, finish up that part of the cultivation field let's go ahead and jump on in cab here get some of our air conditioning All right This is a really nice tractor, really nice model, the modeling. Both inside and out. We've got all kinds of all kinds of nice lights. We've got the weights on the front on either side. like we'll be able to get this in one pass thanks to our mega cultivator front wheels seem to be spinning faster than the back wheels. I wonder if they're slipping due to the MR mod. Oops, wrong way. Actually, before we cultivate that field over there, I want to spray it. That way I can, uh, if I spray, cultivate, spray, actually we don't even need to cultivate that because we're going to use our other planter that, uh, that doesn't need cultivation. So we're just going to fold this up and actually run this on up to the farm and hook up to one of our Great Plains cedars and uh, bring it back down here. what we're going to do. So we've got our cultivator all packed up here. Now it's a pretty wide implement. We're going to have to uh, straddle this road pretty good. You can see uh, it pretty much takes the whole road and then extends beyond the road border a bit. So it's just best if we try to stay in the middle. Something else that was released today is the uh, was the uh, crone was it a crone um, baler that the round baler that allows you to wrap without stopping. I've not been able to play with it. I didn't uh, I didn't use it in Farm Sim 15 because I didn't play Farm Sim 15. But I have heard people talk about that mod with great great um, affection 
and uh, there are going to be lots of happy people out there now assuming that the mod works as as advertised so that you can make your round bales wrap them and not have to stop that was that was one of the biggest detriments to round baling and when the coon square bale wrapper came out it was like you know the best thing since sliced bread uh, because you could uh, continuously bale and not have to keep stopping every 15-20 seconds to unload the baler with the round bales and then you could uh, wrap uh, of course you've got you still had to uh, stop when you had to unload the wrap wrap the square bales but still uh, the square bale wrapper seemed to wrap a bit faster than the round bale wrapper at least uh, in my opinion it did So we're going to put our cultivator down here, just to uh, just to have some place to put it. Let's see if I have a hard time backing up with these tractors that articulate in the middle. That is good enough. We're going to uh, drop that and uh, come up here and try to find our Great plain Cedar. I think it's in this, uh, I think it's in here. Yep, there's one of them. Switch on over to sunflowers. And uh, let's go ahead and fill up our cedar while we're here. We should have seed in here. Let's take a look. Yep, we got seed. close up that and uh, let's go ahead and drive on down to field one and guys that is going to do us for today uh, that is going to do us for our episode I want to thank you guys for watching uh, if you uh, have not subscribed and you like this video uh, please go ahead and consider subscribing you'll get uh, you'll have the ability to get announcements or notifications uh, when uh, when new videos of mine come out whoa we got uh, we got some fish tailing going on here it's probably the uh, MR mod that's uh, that's messing with this. Let's see if we can't. Uh, yeah, see what's going on there. That's uh, that's pretty. It's uh, pretty messed up. See so now that we got her going straight. Let's see if we can. We'll just have to take it a lot easier than we were taking it. So, uh, if you like this video, uh, please consider subscribing. Like I said, uh, if you uh, if you really like the video, please go ahead and click the like button. That is always the best thing for me is clicking that little thumbs up. Uh, please feel free to leave comments. I love when people leave comments. I love to interact with uh, you all through the comments section. I like to know uh, what kinds of what parts of the episode you liked, what parts of the episode you didn't like. I'm always trying to figure out uh, what interests you all will have. Like I said, we're going to have to uh, take this thing slow until we get it straight. There we go. This tractor has plenty of horsepower to pull the implement, but uh, maybe the front is, uh, is a bit light, possibly, for... Uh, for this implement because the uh, front seems to be rather squirrely under uh, under turning so I'd like for you all to also check out the guys down in my description uh, they are all YouTube youtubers uh, they're all members of the three dudes gaming network uh, which is a web forum community 
uh, where you can uh, join up and just basically hang out with a bunch of guys that are mature adults. Uh, there are probably kids that are members there, but uh, everyone that uh, interacts on the forums acts on the forums in a mature and adult fashion. Uh, there is a multiplayer server associated with the Three Dudes Gaming Network that uh, members can participate with. And then also I'd like for you to check out, if you haven't already done so, uh, the PCSG Network, uh, our community. Uh, they are a even better bunch of guys, if it's hard to believe, uh, that are out there for the love of simulation-based gaming, uh, be it farm sim, truck sim, flight sim, uh, any type of a sim, they are they are going to be into it. Uh, they have scheduled multiplayer games every Monday, Wednesday, or not Monday, not even Monday, every Friday. Saturday and Sunday nights, um, or afternoons through into Sunday nights, and uh, well, I believe on Fridays and Saturdays they do farm sim multiplayer, and on Sundays they alternate between American Truck Sim and Euro Truck Sim, if I'm correct. And uh, just recently uh, they brought up a community, an open community web uh, multiplayer server. And uh, for the last uh, two Wednesday, Wednesdays, including tonight, I'm recording this on a Wednesday night, uh, I will be uh, uh, participating with the on the open multiplayer server on Wednesday nights starting at 9.30 uh, Eastern time zone, which should be minus 4 uh, GMT, I believe, or minus 5, depending on the time of the year. So uh, come on out, sign up for the PCSG community, and uh, join me online on the uh, open community uh, multiplayer server. That'll be some fun. If I'm not doing that, I will. I have decided to start streaming on uh, Wednesday nights. Uh, so we may be streaming on this map, kind of doing stuff that we need to do uh, off camera. So uh, until next time, guys. Happy farming.